Well, good afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Wanted to bring you an update on our rain threat tonight and severe weather threat tomorrow. Looks like our chances for some uh, severe weather are on the increase tomorrow. Could be a significant event for us. Still a lot of uncertainty with this, so I want to just do a uh, very quick update uh, here tonight. And then uh, I've got a previous engagement tonight here. Uh, but then uh, later on tonight, when I get back from that, I will... Uh, look at some more updates but here's a little quick one for you at least as we go throughout first off it's about 4 53 p.m eastern time here there's some rain out to our west that will filter in late this evening probably after dark and then through the overnight hours very powerful cold front out to our west that's what's going to spark off these severe weather uh, chances as it moves a little bit closer to us so you can expect a pretty wet overnight hours uh, honestly overall now here's what we're going to be concerned with the storm prediction center out in uh, norman oklahoma they cover the entire the united states here they place us under an enhanced risk of severe weather for a good chunk of, of uh, southern indiana here and really a slight risk covers everybody an enhanced risk is what we used to call the old upper level slight risk it just equates to a 30 percent risk but you notice that hatched area in cover uh, covers places here uh, from about evansville maybe up to vincennes and on down and that hatched area is where the most significant of the severe weather is expected according to the SPC so uh, very very concerning if we zoom in towards that risk a little bit closer here's a little bit uh, closer view of that and you can see really from about uh, oh from Dubois County on and ports over to uh, the west we've got that stronger enhanced risk for severe weather on Thursday now this will probably primarily going to be an afternoon and evening event let me show you that on future radar just to kind of time it out. Here's where we stand on things uh, right around now. You can see uh, there's the scattered showers and thunderstorms that have developed out to our west this afternoon. Those move in during the overnight hours. In fact, there are at times we can end up getting some pretty decent uh, uh, rainfall at times. Wouldn't be surprised for some locally heavy rain to come out of this. But then notice at the high res NAM here, uh, by the time we go into the mid morning, late at early afternoon hours here, uh, we've got the rain cleared out here, and that gives a window of development development out to our west before we have these supercells start to develop out here and these supercells by the way that's what we would call these individual clusters and that's the ones uh, that we tend to worry about the most let me just stop it here and just kind of highlight a couple of things and you'll see exactly what I mean notice the individual cell here there's one here there's sort of one up here that's got a bowing look to it uh, whenever you get these uh, little individual cells here rather than just a sort of a solid line of storms that's whenever things well you start to get a little bit more concerned with it uh, because that's whenever you could have some problems out of this so future radar definitely has a uh, strong look to it and this would start well this would be about 7 p.m eastern time the next frame here uh, would be uh, about 10 o'clock so you can see uh, anywhere from uh, around sunset is going to be uh, whenever we've got the severe weather frame we'll say from about five o'clock to ten o'clock or so in that time frame I think is when we're going to be our best bet for some severe weather tomorrow evening the way things look now this is very conditional as I said it's going to depend on how much cloud cover we end up seeing so let me just sort of take you through this there's a cloud cover we're seeing out there right now and it's all due to these showers and storms that cloud cover continues during the overnight hours here's Indiana right here um, by the time we go into the early morning hours, here's 5 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, just a lot of rain and clouds over us over the entire area. But watch how quickly this thins out. By the time you get to 10 a.m., there's your clearing line, according to the high res NAM to our west. That works its way to by, to the state a line here by 1 o'clock. And uh, as that moves over, over a course of a couple of hours, you start to see some sunshine here. And so if you can get two or three hours of sunshine with the March sunshine that we've got going on late March right now, that could be a enough instability for, for the atmosphere to recover enough that we could get some redevelopment of some pretty strong thunderstorms out to our west. The question is, will the clouds clear out of here that fast or not? That's always the question here in the Ohio Valley. We always struggle with that, and a lot of times these models want to clear it out way faster than it actually does. Wouldn't be surprised at all tomorrow if the clouds don't clear out of here and we never end up uh, getting uh, getting uh, some sunshine filter through. That's a distinct possibility. We've seen the models completely fail uh, more often than not on that. Uh, so it's something that we're going to have to look out for. I will say this, though. The high res NAM did a very good job, uh, at least a reasonably good job, on Sunday's severe weather that we had. So uh, is it handling this tomorrow? If it is, then there's going to be what uh, potential for a more significant threat tomorrow night. If we don't see some sunshine, 
9 tomorrow afternoon, those clouds don't clear out as fast, the threat would certainly be a little bit less. I do think we're going to see some storms with it one way or the other. I think it's going to be a question of how strong. And the reason why I say that is because we have just plenty of wind energy and to the upper levels of the atmosphere. Let me find the right uh, frame here to show you this, and we'll... Uh, and then we'll uh, get you that here. But uh, here you go. So here's looking at wind levels up in the atmosphere. We're looking at our bulk shear parameter. Again, you need about 30 to 45 units, 35 to 40 units of uh, knots there of uh, bulk shear. This is wind energy up in the atmosphere. This is change in wind speed as you go from 0 to 6 kilometers up in the atmosphere. And again, we're in good shape over that, 60, 65, even almost up to 70 knots of bulk shear around the area. That's more than enough for uh, uh, severe thunderstorm development. Instability, though, well, if the high-res NAM is to be trusted, look at this. you got even upwards of 2,000 joules per kilogram here uh, just out to our west this would be uh, the the uh, instability parameters as we are uh, seeing that line move through more than enough for sustained organized severe weather but this is of course uh, this is of course the same model as predicting some sunshine tomorrow afternoon those numbers will be much less uh, if it ends up being more of a cloudy day all day though but even with any instability with these kind of wind energies some stronger storms are possible so the bottom line is I do think we're going to see I will be really surprised if we don't have some severe thunderstorm warnings out of this tomorrow but we could see end up uh, some stronger instability and so uh, what kind of threats could we be looking at well certainly if we get a lower instability threat then we could be looking at more just general severe thunderstorm warnings for wind damage and for some uh, potential for some small hail there with that if we get these larger numbers of cape to materialize the cape convective available potential energy that's your instability parameter if that materializes we could end up having a very larger uh, uh, hail kind of threat along with this along with some more tornado threats as well and so let me show you why here's uh, our surface based uh, instability there it's fairly strong on this again that's dependent on sunshine but as you look at the other levels you're looking here at these wind barbs you're looking at a change in wind direction as you go up in the atmosphere and notice the veering on this not only do you have speed shear but you got directional shear you've got change in speed and direction as you go from the bottom of the atmosphere up to the top that's very conducive for uh, tornadic development so if you look at some other parameters, significant tornado parameter, while not off the charts, it is very strong here for uh, southwest Indiana and parts of southern Illinois here. And uh, again, our supercell composite parameter, also very strong down in there. That is why, by the way, they have highlighted this area with the enhanced risk for uh, storms. And anywhere you're in that enhanced risk, there could be uh, an increased risk for large hail and damaging tornadoes. Uh, uh, large uh, tornadoes out of that. The tornado risk is going to be a little bit lower as you get into the slide and then uh, almost non-existent as you get into the marginal, which is the green over here. Uh, so there's a lot of uncertainties with this still. I don't want to alarm. I don't want to raise up the flag and say, everybody, uh, you, know, you know, sound the alarm. It's going to be an event to end all events. We don't know that yet, but this is just your alert, folks, that you need to be weather aware tomorrow. This will be a, a very serious situation. If we can get that sunshine to break out tomorrow, things could get pretty bad in a hurry around here. Uh, hopefully we'll get lucky. Hopefully that uh, severe weather bubble that we uh, get around here so often will develop over us and we won't see the sunshine and we just get a couple of random warnings out of this rather than a, rather than a major outbreak. Let's hope that's the case. But the potential for something a little bit more significant is there certainly is a risk that we can't ignore at this point all signs are pointing to that we could have some severe weather with this so we'll keep it in mind so what you need to do at this point have your severe weather plan uh, handy folks know where you would go in the event of a tornado know what you uh, be able to uh, get those uh, cars indoors if you possibly can into a garage so that you can avoid some hail damage things like that just kind of have a plan in place if you can again the best window of development folks tomorrow is from about 5 to 10 p.m the way things look uh, right now folks now tomorrow afternoon we start to see whether we're going to get a little bit of sunshine or not we'll have a little bit more handle on this so the bottom line just keep it right here tuned to southern indiana weather i'll have more updates later on this evening after i see the evening models come in and process i'll have more updates and then of course more updates uh, tomorrow morning very early before you head to work and throughout the day as well so just keep it tuned here folks uh and we will get you through this i'm meteorologist michael wilhite have a great evening folks we'll see you for the next update